a researcher, true and true. So I was like, let me go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay. Key. The Bureau of Labor Statistics. I don't care what the news is writing about jobs. I don't care what the po- what the politics with Joe Biden, with Trump. I don't care what nobody say about the jobs. You go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and it will give you detailed information on what industries, what sectors, what roles, what jobs are hiring, how fast they're growing against the totality of U.S. occupations, right? So when I looked at um, software engineering and software development, you know, it's growing quite fast over over the five-year period that I was looking at it, but the number of uh, developers in the millions in the U.S., and then I looked at information security because the way they codify this is is different, you know, um, you know, rose by any other name was smell sweet, not the perfect codification, but let's go information security as opposed to cybersecurity, right? Hundreds of thousands. So immediately what that told me was that not supply and demand. Supply and demand, exactly. We are making things exponentially faster than we are securing them. And so what you know about the about demand is that okay, I want to be on the on on the in the shallower pool. Like I want to be in the less crowded space because that means I'll be a little bit more coveted and I'll be a little bit more indispensable. That was my logic. Um, and so I started to pursue it. And, and immediately when I started to learn it, um, people that I was talking to and networking with, I was working at a cigar bar in DC and a lot of those patrons were gov tech employees working in cybersecurity. So it was a lot of like, Difficult, but very strategic decisions that I made um, to put myself in these spaces. And so I'm just like studying my tail away, like slinging drinks you know, and cigar smoke, <laughs> you know, being nosy and just networking and stuff like that. And, and there with the sugar daddies. And there with the sugar daddies. Like, what you do for a living? Like, you do what? Oh, I'm studying infinite. They're like, oh, yeah, really? Like, they're like, whatever. Like, they think I'm going to be there. I wasn't there, baby, after 90 days. <laughs> 90 days, folks. Um, and so I was, I was studying. I took... Come to your security plus in 30 days. Like I had, I was studying 16 hours a week. Like mm-hmm. my weekend, my weekends were spent in a class. So on the one hand, every boot camp is not created equal. But what, again, strategy, I chose a boot camp that did not get their money until I got hired. They don't get paid until Tiffany gets hired. That was important to me. Yeah. So they're incentivized to get you hired. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna get I, I'm gonna get higher essentially at the end of the day. That's what that means to me. They don't and they're not gonna continue to offer this service unless they know they have something good, right? They have a short shot program. So I took CompTIA Security Plus in June of 2021, and then I followed up immediately, um, certified ethical hacking, which is very easy after taking CompTIA Security Plus. It's easy anyway. Okay, well I hate that test. C H, it's super easy. I hate it because. I took it when they changed what I had just studied and all the questions that I took the test on back in 20, what was that? 2015. Uh, all of them were different. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I should have just protested it to see if I could like retake it. Cause everybody was saying the same thing on Reddit. It was like, yo, this is, and you just never retook it. Yeah. I was done with it. Back. I, it was expensive. That was $500 for me. And I was doing help desk at the that time. So expensive. And CH is way more expensive than that now. It's like, a couple it's like thousands of dollars right and back then all you really had to do is know what different mhap scans were i mean pretty much i mean the domains of but this is why i don't shot this is why i gravitate towards the subject matter that the test covers because it's right. going to be like if you can say you have command of all five of uh, security plus domains and you learn how to speak to that and you actually get some hands-on training with that you're good you're so doing better than most so in 2013 like you, I study. I was working at Target. It was in between me finna go to my last quarter in mm-hmm. undergrad. I got my security plus. Mm-hmm. I just did it off of studying the book. My CD for the hands on didn't work. Dang. So it wasn't. I mean, outside of me, I took like a forensic class, undergrad, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I didn't know nothing. And a lot of people feel that way, but I think my experience was so different. But it's also again in the context of because you was being I strategic. Studied. Yes, I was not somebody. I still have my physical notebook for CompTIA Security Plus, and it's, some, it's that it's that work. It's somewhere in my parents' crib. And having like done, having went straight into IR, AppSec, SSDOC, it is valid. No, no, yeah, because you you literally got to see the stuff that they were kind of talking about. Mm-hmm. For me, I, I saw a little bit. I saw some of the stuff because I did help this for TSA. Okay. But at the same time, it was just like, that's, but that's, but that's what I'm saying. That's why this is like a good, you know, back and forth banter. Sure. Because the guy at the time was like, retired Air Force, had a military job on the base in Bossier. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, you should get this. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, a lot of people, when I had my consultations, 
I got all these certs, but I can't get hired. And I was like, yeah, because you were strategic and you didn't really learn anything or know what you wanted to do. You, yeah. They just told you to get the certification. Yeah, which is, is and, and that is, it's not this industry. Um, that's important for people to understand. And then I like to start at a baseline of, you know, the person who secured your organs. <laughs> Did they just go sit? Did they just go study an exam and just sit for an exam? No. So why all that all of that heat in your phone? Why should the person who secures all of that stuff you got in your phone just go sit? You like is that appropriate? Even as the person who seeks to do that, you know, I think in our desperation just to keep it a buck, like we need it, we need it now. But the reality of the situation is like that's not how we're going to get anything of quality, whether that's mm-hmm. a cybersecurity career or anything else like that's not how you get things of quality and so if you want to be truly competitive and you want to have a leg to stand on and go into a place and speak confidently and say no I was not hired to do this already but this is everything that I've been doing on my own you can do that like I did the same thing I didn't finish OWASP WebGo but I was damn sure struggling through it enough to speak to any hiring manager about what it is that I'm fumbling bumbling through that was the first thing I did I was doing security plus in OWASP WebGo So I at least did what I had to troubleshoot to implement this software. Right. And so every step of the way, I'm like, oh, no, this is blowing me. But why is it blowing me? You know, like, so I'm very strategic in that manner. And I encourage my students to do that. But again, that is what's pushing me in in this consultancy, in this coaching practice, because it really becomes about mindset. Like, before you even can get into what to tell somebody what a tool is, they have to believe that they can learn something different and change that perspective. Exactly. Exactly.